Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix and Perfect and I'm telling you up front, there's gonna be compromises. You heard it right, just like a delicious cheese burst pizza might not be excellent for your health or a fit low calorie salad might not please the tongue, you cannot have it all. There's always gonna be some catch or a compromise. In this lesson, I'm gonna share with you 10 compromises we can make to make your Photoshop document smaller. Now the important thing to think about here is which are the compromises that you are willing to make that's not gonna matter to you much and which ones are non-negotiable. In this video, I'm gonna share with you these size reduction techniques and the downside of each and every one of them because there's only so much you can fit in a small box. Also, this video is divided into chapters, so feel free to skip to any section you want or use that as a reference. I'm super excited to share these techniques with you, so without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the tricky world of Photoshop, and if you want to learn how we created this composite, please do watch this video. We're going to use this as an example for a PSD to reduce size. So the basic understanding, actually the most fundamental understanding of any file is that the more information you have, the bigger the size would be. The lesser information you have, the smaller the size would be. The question is, which are the informations that you're willing to compromise with. Quick note before we dive into the techniques, I see that 50% of our amazing viewers were so engrossed in watching the videos that they might have missed pressing the subscribe button. Happens with me all the time when I'm eager to learn something new. Please do consider subscribing and turning on notifications so that you can help make this video reach you and artists like you. Big shout out to the notification squad. Actually, the first one to comment on this video I'm gonna give that person a free Pix Imperfect action. Moving on to the very first technique and that is trimming the excess. So there are some image information that is outside the canvas. For instance, if I go to my background layer, have a look, if I press Ctrl or Command T, a major portion of that is outside the canvas. So if you don't need it, take it away. Keep in mind, you cannot meddle with the pixels in a smart object. It has to be a raster object. So for demonstration, let's first of all rasterize it. So this is a raster image and we already have a background blurred copy. So what if we trim it? What happens then? To look at the size of the document in real time, you click right here in the status bar, click on this arrow and choose document sizes. You see some numbers here. The first number is actually the size of the document if it was saved with a single layer. If everything was just merged into one layer and saved uncompressed, that would be the size, 30.5 MB. Now, keep in mind, these are the estimated sizes. The actual sizes can be different. The second is, if you save it as is with all the layers and the effects and the filters and everything. Now, some of you might ask, all right, the size here says 361, all right? But if I save it, when I go to my Finder or Explorer, the size is a little different, it's 327. Why that discrepancy? Even I had that question, because this is a PSD, it has everything uncompressed. Why is there a difference? Well, it was even hard for me to understand. So I asked my friends at Adobe, and actually these are the people who create Photoshop. I asked them, why is this so? And this is the explanation they gave me. If you're interested, read through it. But if I begin to explain this in a video, it can get very long. Thanks to Meredith Payne Stotzner and Russell Williams for such extensive information and helping me so quickly. All in all, in simple terms, keep in mind that document size is basically the amount of information you have in the document and it's an estimated value. Anyway, back to the lesson, it's 361.2. If I trim all the raster layers that go beyond the canvas, here's how to do it. Go to image, trim. Now we want to trim transparent pixels from the top left, right and bottom. Hit OK. Now all the excess is trimmed. Have a look at the size, it's 318, it was 361. Look at this major reduction. Now what is the downside you might ask? you lose the extra information. So right now, if you press Ctrl or Command T, you will see that the size is the size of the canvas. So if you were working with just this layer, if you wanted to make this smaller and have more details of the extra areas, you cannot have it, it's all gone and deleted. Technique number two is take their smartness away. You see, smart people are hard to manage. However, simple people, dumb people, easy to manage. That's how they brainwash all the dumb people in politics. I'm not gonna get into that. In Photoshop, we have this background layer which is blurred where we have applied smart filters to create a realistic sense of depth of field. So if we take that away, you see the background is so sharp and it's not matching at all. Let's turn that back on. 
However, if you don't need to go back and change back the values, you can always rasterize the smart objects. But would you be just continuing to rasterize every smart object there is? It'll take a lot of time. Let's say your image has like 10, 12 smart objects. Instead of going there one by one, rasterizing everything, you can rasterize it all at once by going to Lem, rasterize, and then rasterize all layers. Choose that. Every layer would be rasterized and have a look at the size. It is still 318, but trust me, there will be a difference when you save it. So this is the original with the smart object, 327 MB, and this one is rasterized. Have a look, 178. Just look at the difference. So as I said, the document size at the bottom is just estimated. Might not be very accurate. So what is the catch here, you might ask? You lose the ability to change the values of smart filters. You also lose the ability to have the details intact. Moving on to technique number three, and that is deleting empty layers. While creating a composite or even a retouching project, in the process, you might create some empty layers to try out something, let's say, adding a dark tone here. And then later, you forget about it. And in the process, you have created lots and lots of empty layers and you do not know which ones are empty and which ones have something. So right now, I have about five or six empty layers, but I'm not sure which ones are empty and which ones aren't. Because in some layers, there might be a little spot, let's say for even a flare that might count. So to delete all the empty layers at once, go to File, Scripts, and then delete all empty layers. And it automatically deleted all the empty layers and spared this one, which looks like an empty layer, but it isn't. Now it might look like a win-win, but the catch here is that the difference is just not so much. Unless you're creating 10,000 empty layers and then deleting it, then it might show a difference of about five or six MB, but not more than that. But what it helps you more is with cleaning up your layer stacks. Technique number four is deleting hidden or unused layers. Also in the process of retouching or compositing, we sometimes add something to it, which might not look right at the moment, and then we kind of hide that, hoping that later it might add some value to our image. But that always ends up taking a lot of space in most of the cases. Similarly, in this case, I thought of adding flares and then later thought of just turning it off. Maybe later I might want it. So it takes up a lot of space here. If I delete that, if I take that away because I'm not using the flares, if I delete that, have a look. Right now the size is 196 on the right. If I take that away, the size reduced to 142. What is the catch here again? You lose the option. If you had that later, if you changed your mind, you would have the option to have something extra to your image or have an extra option there. So that's that. Let's move on. Now we are halfway down the techniques, moving on to technique number five, and that is applying all the masks. So if you look at it closely, our subject comes with a mask. If you look at it closely again, the flares, one of the layers have a mask. How much of a difference do you think it would make if we applied this mask right here? Now again, you wouldn't go around selecting each and every layer with a mask and then applying the mask. There's an easier way to do that. But before we do, have a look at the size. It's 196.4. Go to File, Scripts, and then it says Flatten All Masks. Click on that, and it automatically applies all the masks right there. So it's doing that right now. So have a look at the top. It applied the mask, and also with the subject, it applied the mask. Difference in size, 186 now. Earlier it was 196. Now this makes a significant difference if you have a lot of layers with masks. Now keep in mind if you run this script, even if the layer is a smart object, it will rasterize it and apply that mask there. So again, the catcher is definitely, you're losing the details. It's gonna permanently delete the extras and you won't be able to get any additional details if you wanted that. Moving on to the sixth technique, and this is a major one actually, and probably you already know about it. It makes one of the biggest differences apart from image size. And this one is merging the layers. And you can do this, for example, let's say you're sending this composite to your client. He wants to adjust the subject, move the subject to the right or left according to the copy that your client might want to add, or maybe the designer who just wants to adjust it according to the magazine layout. In that case, first of all, look at the size. It's 125. 
You want the background to be in all one layer, so select the first background layer, hold the controller command, select the last one, press controller command E, or you can simply just take that away. We don't need that. And you can rasterize this to further reduce the size. We want all of the subject elements in one layer. So select the subject layer, hold the shift key and select the topmost layer, which has anything to do with the subject and then press control or command E. Now the subject is in one layer. Now definitely on top of that, we have applied some global effects. So what if we make a copy of both of those? So select both of those, press control or command J. Now we have a copy. Let's separately apply it to the background. Let's just bring it down and apply it to the background. And then we have applied it again to the subject. So merge that with the background, press control or command E and merge these with the subject. Boom, done. All in two layers. Now look at the size. It's just 38. And you already know the downsides here. This doesn't need explaining. So here's the deal. The amount of reduction you want in your PSD file, the more you have to give away. Technique number seven is also a major one. It's actually one of the biggest. And that is image size. For every layer there is with raster information, which is not a smart object, if you reduce the image size, there will be a reduction in the information you have. Obviously, if you reduce the size, the amount of pixels will decrease. However, it'll not affect the smart objects. So if there's a smart object here, for example, this background, if this was the only layer here or all of the layers would have been a smart object, in that case, reducing the image size might not have made a major difference. But since we have masks and raster layers as well, then have a look at the size now, 179. If you go to image, image size, it's 3000 by 2000, right? Even if you reduce it just a little bit, by 2500 by 1667, you would notice that the size goes down from 179 to 134. Moving on to technique number eight, and that is applying all clipping masks. So time and again, we have a layer where we apply a lot of layers, adjustment layers, or even simple layers as clipping masks. What that means is that whatever effect we apply will be limited to the area of the base layer. So if we break something out of that clipping mask, for example, if we break the noise out of that clipping mask, now it's applied throughout. If I create a clipping mask by holding the Alt key or the Option key and click on the layer right there, now the noise is only applied to the subject. Similarly, let's try it with this curve right here. So here's the before, here's the after. Now if I break it off from the clipping mask, it leaks outside, all right? So let's just apply clipping mask all throughout. By the way, I'm holding Alt or Option key and clicking on the line between these two layers. Anyway, so you can apply all of these adjustments that you have applied to the subject and just burn it down to the pixels of the subject. That's what it means. Just apply all the clipping masks permanently to the subject. And the way to do that is to select the base layer where you are applying all of these clipping masks, any base layer, and then simply go to layer and merge clipping mask. Now all of the clipping masks that we saw right here is vanished because it's all applied to the subject and it makes a major difference. Earlier the size was 179. After we applied it, the size was 130. Moving on to technique number nine and this is similar to technique number eight and this time we are applying all the layer effects. Let's understand it with the help of a simple example. Look at the size, it's zero bytes. If I create a brand new layer and let's dab in between simple circle. Let's convert this into a smart object by going to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Let's add a little bit of Gaussian blur by going to file, blur, and then Gaussian blur. All right. 40 is fine. Now let's also add a shadow to it. Double click on the right hand side of the layer and then add a drop shadow. Shadow is fine. Hit OK. Now if you just simply rasterize the layer by right clicking on it and choosing a rasterize layer, it will still keep the drop shadow. However, if you go to file, scripts and then flatten all layer effects. Every layer effect would be flattened and the size would be greatly reduced. Where it was not applied, it is 5.03. And when it's applied, the size is smaller. Moving on to the last technique, and this might not sound like much, but it does make a significant difference. And that is simply deleting unused layer effects. It can be a smart filter, layer style, anything. So for the noise layer, let's say I added a couple Gaussian blur layers and later I thought about just turning off one of those. This takes some space. So simply drag that 
and drop it into the trash can. Sometimes there's a subject and there's a lot of shadows we add, lots of shadow layers to create a continuous shadow. If you want to learn more about it, check out this video. Sometimes you might not need all of those shadows for different backgrounds. So you turn off some shadows. So deleting that will help you slightly reduce your space. So those are the 10 compromises you can make to reduce the size of your Photoshop document. Keep in mind, you cannot download a 100 GB game in 1 MB. There has been a lot of rumors around the internet where you can download a game, I think it was GTA, which was about 50 to 100 GB in 1 MB due to excessive compression. Even then, let's say it's possible, all right? And sometimes it can be possible. Let's say somebody compressed the game from 100 GB to 1 MB. In that case, uncompressing that file can take a lot of time, even days. So there's always something you have to give up. There's always something you have to compromise. In the compression case, it is time. So life is full of compromises. So is Photoshop technique. You know what's not a compromise? Subscribing to Piximperfect. It's always a win-win situation. You just subscribe and I'll make sure to give you quality content that you can learn something from. And if you did learn something from this video, make sure to give us a like and also again, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.